So there's, there's an expectation of symmetry, a description of a sort of symmetrical system sometimes in physics. Uh, we, we get close to the answer, it breaks, and then it gets reassembled. That's where the Nobel Prizes come, right? The, all the Nobel Prizes come when you reassemble. Uh, you, you get the broken symmetry and then you reassemble it and then you're the, you're the big winner. Is that how, is that how it works? <laughs> so um, there are symmetric objects which we admire and we find beautiful. But the most beautiful thing of all are the symmetries of the laws of nature. The laws are not easy to describe. They describe the regularities of the events and structures we observe. They're not butterflies. But without the symmetries, you probably could never have discovered these laws. The symmetries of the laws of physics organize the regularities of the laws themselves. For example, one of the fundamental symmetries that Robert referred to are the symmetries of space-time. The fact that the laws of physics are invariant, unchanged, when you translate in time or in space or rotate space. That is essential. Uh, it means that an experiment that I perform today in New York or tomorrow in Santa Barbara, I get the same answer. It means that if I publish a paper reporting my experimental findings, I need not say where I did the experiment or when or in what direction my laboratory was facing. It will Imagine, just cost more in New York and there'll be better weather in Santa Barbara. <laughs> so the laws are hard to describe. But we do have especially the weather, yeah. in our experiments. So. But when we isolate them from these um, irrelevant factors like weather, then the laws, the regularities become evident and the symmetries. The, one of the reasons I was thinking when you were sh show that beautiful video of symmetrical objects is how rare they are. Most situations in the world that we observe are totally asymmetrical, including your face. <laughs> this room is totally asymmetrical. You're there and not there. And yet if I do an experiment facing this way or this way, I get the same result. States of the world are incredibly asymmetrical. The rare symmetrical ones we therefore appreciate more. The laws, however, are always symmetrical. When we talk about symmetry breaking, we're not breaking the laws of physics. They have this incredible symmetry. And you know, it was only about 100 years ago, Einstein first stated that fact in that way. Before that, much as that video represented, symmetrical objects are kind of beautiful and we find them in nature and they're useful. They make our description simpler, etc. Einstein came along and put symmetry first, the symmetry of space-time. And then the symmetry of space-time that is sort of independent of the particular dynamics, the particular laws of physics, and in fact, he used those symmetries to severely constrain the possible laws that you could have. It's a total revolutionary approach, and one that has proved extremely useful to follow in the 20th century, so and the, has led to many Nobel Prizes. Right. 